of that on his own, just on those quick pullback slant plays. Navy needs one yard for a first down on second down. A means went to the far side. The power eye formation in the backfield behind the freshman Roban. of their own and ahead of that forward stake goes Cleveland Cooper number 25 the tailback and once again the unbalanced line attack uh, both uh, sides showing that when they get the wide side of the field they're utilizing all that space to give their backs some running room Cooper now 64 yards and 11 carries and two new men coming under the Navy lineup number 73 Randy Seward and number 83 tight end Kevin Sullivan from Philadelphia. Chestnut Hill Academy product here in Philadelphia. 6'4", 201 pounds. Down to the 26, first and 10 for the Navy. Cleveland Cooper losing the handle. And number 93 says it's armies, but we'll have to wait for the official. Yeah, they all, uh, they all vote out there on whose ball it is, Chris. Uh, They untangle them, and it looks like the Navy still has that football. And the rotating of the arm means keep that clock going. So it's a second down, and uh, actually there was a four-yard gain despite losing the handle and coming back a bit. Cooper recovered his own fumble. Oh, he, he looks like a thoroughbred. He's a good one. Second down at six now. Navy leading 17 to nothing. We have a minute 32 to go in the first half. Tipped over an outstretched leg. So let's go to Don Tallison. This is the first season for Coach Homer Smith. The Man Army hopes will rebuild their football program. Last year, Smith was the offensive coordinator at UCLA when the Bruins were the top rushing team in the country. He played his college football at Princeton. He served as an assistant coach at Army and Stanford and as a head coach at Davidson Pacific before joining Pepper Rogers at UCLA in 72. When Rogers went to Georgia Tech this fall, Smith accepted the head job here at West Point. Chris? Okay, Don, following our Army-Navy telecast, Dave Dials in the Prudential College scoreboard. Dave really will keep you up to date, always does each week. And then at approximately 4.15, Ice skating featuring Janet Lynn and its charity uh, benefit performance at Madison Square Garden, which includes many of the international stars for the benefit of the United States Olympic Fund. Then at 5 Eastern Time from the Los Angeles Coliseum, Woody Hayes joins Keith Jackson to do commentary on the Southern California Notre Dame game. How do you think uh, Woody Hayes will do as a color commentator. Well, I, I'm sure, as you know, Chris, Woody's going to tell it like it is. Uh, whatever <laughs> he sees out there is going to be described in very accurate terms. Uh, I can hardly wait to hear him myself. Right. So that comes at 5 Eastern. All right, Amin flanked to the far side of the field for the power eye, third down at 7. Navy on third down is one of four. They lead, though. All right, Goodman carrying the ball and he did not get the necessary yardage. There's a little sightseeing down there as though the ball had been fumbled, but apparently not. It is down at the 33, so there's a gain of four. It is fourth down and three. Army was in kind of a prevent defense then, expecting to lay it up in the, in the air, and uh, Navy crossed him up and went right at him with Goodwin, but it, it was not successful. So now we have a fourth down and three, and uh, Navy's John Steppelbean will do the punting. And a moment ago, you saw Gary Smithy, number 26, in uh, single safety again, looking into a bright sun. This John Steppelbean is a super kicker. I guess Notre Dame, he had 10 kicks for a 53-yard average, which made a big difference in the contest. He can really kick the ball. Maybe leading 17 to nothing. Gary Reed snaps the ball. The kick is on its way. Taking a Navy bounce. Being protected by the midshipmen in the dark jerseys. And it's inside the 25 of Army. Traveling 44 yards. 56 seconds left in the first half. Don? George, George Welsh, who is in his second season as Navy's head coach, is the first Naval Academy graduate to coach the midshipmen since 1947. He played at Navy during the 1950s, and he still ranks sixth on their all-time passing and total offense list. 
He was an assistant coach for 10 years at Penn State before coming to Annapolis. And while there, he coached such outstanding backs as Lydell Mitchell and John Huffnick. Chris? All right, Lehman Hall, the new quarterback, the freshman from a double wing formation, puts one into the air. Lehman Hall, a freshman from a Popka, Florida, threw one and caught by Chuck Tysing, the split end number 46. So Army coming in with a little razzle-dazzle now, and they have come up and marked with their first completion. Yes, they have, and this is uh, the way they do it. The format is to bring in Lehman Hall and their spread formation from the T. He's a drop-back passer, big, tall kid who has a nice delivery. Uh, Navy's gone into a prevent defense with just three up front, five short, and three deep, so I think they're in the defense to contain him, but he's going to make a few yards if he's on target. All right. was an early indication of a first down and then a measurement was called for. Tyson catching the pass so now it's a second down and a little more than the length of a football. It is not a first down. From about the 34. Hall, 65. Oh, he's got one out there. But apparently in the wrong hands and the Army would be catcher Tried to say there was interference, but Ed Jeter, number 19 of Memphis, Tennessee, intercepts. Here it goes again. Lehman Hall dropping back in the pocket. He's throwing a long one, a fly pattern way downfield. But that prevent defense, it really has three safety men back there. That's really tough to throw deep against that kind of a zone. It was intended for Bob Woodcock. This is the second Army turnover. This time, not as in dangerous as territory as the fumble punt. But it is at the 23 of Navy as the midshipmen lead 17 to nothing. 36 seconds remaining in the first half. Roban. Roban moving it from the 23 out to the 27 as Rick Kniff, number 91 of Winter Park, Florida, pushed him out of bounds. There he is, number 99, 91. Let's see him again. He's really good over the center as a nose guard. He's quick. He, he hits a good shot on the center. Then he finds the ball, pursues nicely. That's a good pursuit pattern down the line. Now he's got the cutoff angle right on Roman, and he gets him on a nice tackle from behind. Voice of Coach Ben Martin of the United States Air Force Academy, completing his 17th year as head coach. What a job he's done there. All right, Cleveland Cooper on a second and seven. He can move. He really can, and he got it out of bounds. He got it out of bounds. That's important. Stop that clock. Now they're getting close to that midfield stripe. Don Mooney, 25, and Jeff Bruckner, number 61, stopped him and forced him out of bounds. It's a first and 10 at the 41 now. Cooper with 13 carries, 86 yards. Steve uh, Bear Illich of South Bend, Indiana, a junior, comes in at left tackle on the Navy offense, number 75. Mike Roban carrying, knifing off to the far side of the line as Dyson makes the stop, number 51, joined by Dunn Cavage. And on the field clock, 15 seconds in the first half. Here's a look uh, without the helmet of Mike Roban, number 15, from Great Falls, Montana. He's one of the very best uh, in the state of Montana. We knew a lot about him. Uh, he was the outstanding high school football player there. I think on that last play, however, Chris, that that was a broken play. He mishandled the ball. Uh, I'm sure they didn't want to sneak the ball at that point in time. They were set up to do something wider to throw it. But So they had to use one of their timeouts. Like the idea of freshmen playing? Yeah, I like it. If I had Mike Roban, I'd play him, too. Uh, I, I think it's a good scene. There are a great many talented young men in college now, and I think most of the coaches were surprised when so many freshmen made it and made it big, but uh, now they're, they're confident they can do it, and you see a kid like this really cool and poised in a great football game. Uh, uh, that's really a super effort by an 18-year-old young man. Coach Ben Martin. Ben, you're normally nestled at the foot foot of the Rockies, and you know about ice skating, Colorado yes, Springs being a center. Janet Lynn appears right after our telecast today in a, in a benefit, and she's great. Beautiful young woman. Wide world sports. Second and seven now from the 44. And even though he had that arm cocked, brought it back, and tried to get away, there was a tremendous army rush. 
led by Ray Beverly, number 68 of San Antonio, Texas. As time runs out now, only six seconds left on the clock, and it brings up a third down. Of course, Robin Amin, uh, being the number one receiver, when he's downfield, he attracts a crowd. And Army had the deep zone with two people really watching him inside and outside. Uh, there was very little chance for that pass to be completed. And we hope that at halftime, Bill Fleming, our colleague, will have an opportunity to chat with the president, President of the United States, Gerald Ford. He uh, seated in the Navy side or the near side for the first half. Then he will go over for the second half to enjoy uh, the cheering of the Corps of Cadets, some 4,200 strong. We look at the Navy huddle now. Third down and seven from the 44. Six seconds left in the first half. Navy is in the lead, 17 to nothing. Have an eye formation. Robin. Right, the old screen up the middle. They were in a prevent with a super safety back there. No sense trying to throw it deep. Uh, probably be picked off. So uh, Georgie Wells went to the center screen. I think it was a good call. I do too. It was intended for Goodwin, number 43, and it brings up a fourth down and seven with two seconds to go in the first half. What would you do here, Ben? Well, you've got uh, one chance. You can uh, flip it on an inside pattern uh, to a good receiver and see if he can run with it, or you can just haul off and lay your ears back and, and throw a deep one down the sidelines. Okay. Amin, at the bottom of your screen now out of view, number 80. Well, they decided to, to, to just try to keep the ball and almost broke it as Roban showed his skill in the open field. He went 21 yards and knocking the ball loose was Al Starkill. So it's halftime with the score, Navy 17, Army nothing. We'll be back at John F. Kennedy Memorial Stadium in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania after a word from our local station. President Gerald Ford was at John F. Kennedy Memorial Stadium today, marking the first time since 1962 a president has made that visit. That, of course, the late John F. Kennedy. Early in the first quarter, Steve Dykus hit from 45 yards out. That put Navy out in front three to nothing. Then later in that quarter, Navy got a break when this punt was fumbled by Gary Smithy. And recovered by Carl Supperson, and that was at the Army 13-yard line. Four plays later, Bob Jackson was having a big day. Both three yards off tackle for the Navy touchdown. The midshipman led 10 to nothing after that first quarter. Billy the 19th liked what he saw and liked what he was chomping on. And with five and a half minutes left in the first half, Jackson scored again, this time on a six-yard sprint around the right side with the extra point Navy's lead. Went out to 17 to nothing, and Army's going to have a tough time. They have to try and get their act together at halftime. This is Bill Flint back at John F. Kennedy Stadium where the President of the United States now is at the center of the field. Everyone is standing around him, and at this moment he is receiving... The commemorative coin, which he flipped at the beginning of the game, the Army Brigade Commander James K. Abko of St. Louis, Missouri, is accompanied there by the Superintendent of the Academy, Major General Sidney Berry, and the men from Navy, the Superintendent, Vice Admiral William P. Mack, and Brigade Commander, Midshipman Captain Jim Adams of Beltsville, Maryland, James Schlesinger, the Secretary of Defense, has greeted the President at the center of the gridiron. And now uh, the President, they're headed today, despite this uh, rather wintry day, it is a sunshiny day. He is dressed in a fur-collared coat, as you can see. Now is shaking hands with the Superintendent of the Academy, Major General Barry. Next to uh, Major General Barry is James Schlesinger, the Secretary of Defense, who has been accompanied today by the Secretary of the Army. And now the Brigade Commander, James Abkauer, is escorting President Ford to this side of the field, and we hope to be able to get a word, get a word with him. extra special to this game. Well, I've been to, I think, four or five Army-Navy games, and every one of them is 
a different ball game. Everyone is interesting, and plus all the excitement, the wonderful cadets and midshipmen. Uh, I really enjoy being here, Bill. I think the Corps is hoping that you will bring them as good a luck as you brought the midshipmen at 17 to nothing uh, against them. Well, I didn't dare mention that I might bring the Army luck when I left the Navy side, but I can cheer a little for the Army now, I guess. You know, Mr. President, football has played a great, great role in your particular life. Just two days ago, you had a, a wonderful reunion with Grand Rapids South the teammates. Well, that old gang that I uh, played high school football with in 1930, we've gotten together every year at Thanksgiving, which was the anniversary of our state championship game. So to see uh, 23 out of the 30 back, it was quite a thrill for me. I noticed, too, that Silas McGee was uh, was back for the first time in, what, 44 years? This was the first time uh, since 1931, correct. He's been out in the West Coast as a longshoreman and just retired, and we had a hard time finding him. But uh, he got some friends that helped him get some money, and he came out, and he was as big a ham <laughs> Thursday as, as he was uh, when we were playing ball. You know, one week ago, you were in Vladivostok at your historic summit meeting with Soviet Secretary Brezhnev. And at that time, everybody here in the United States was very much involved with football, particularly Ohio State and Michigan. How did you get word of the game? Well, as a matter of fact, they woke me up about uh, 5.30 in the morning, which was uh, Sunday morning out there, and told me the uh, bad news from the point of view of Michigan. They tried to console me by saying that uh, the kick uh, almost went over in the last uh, 30 seconds. Uh, but those games are great, Bill. I fortunately played in three of them. Uh, yes, I know. One, two of them. One, two out of three. Uh, but they seem to be better ball players now and put on a better show. So uh, They nice center a little watch. differently now, don't they? Well, uh, than when you centered. We think we used to uh, do that pretty well. But it's a lot easier to center it the way they do now and block. We used to have to center and block. Uh, so uh, at least in one aspect, I think we uh, did a little bit better than they do today. Well, thank you very much for joining us, President Ford. We want to mention to you that on November 22nd, 1975, the Buckeyes will be in the Michigan Stadium. If you and Mrs. Ford and Mike and John and Steve and Susan can come, I'm sure Don Cannon can find six tickets. Well, I'd like to see it. I had planned on it this year, but then uh, we ended up in Vladivostok, so I got it by radio, and I, I'll see you there on the 22nd. Fine. Thanks very much, sir. Nice to see you. Goodbye now. Thank you very much. President Jerry Ford now will accompany the Corps during the second half of this game. So we'll be back in just a moment. The United States Military Academy is dedicated to frequent updating of learning styles. Indicative of this approach at West Point is an instruction support system, which encompasses a highly sophisticated educational television network as well as an academic computer center. This television system, which has been in operation for over one and a half years, includes 600 monitors distributed throughout the academic area for the use of cadets. Television instruction is designed to supplement rather than replace classroom learning in the 175 courses now offered at West Point. 25 full-time staff members are needed to operate and maintain the system's $3 million worth of equipment. All cadets also have access to over 150 computer terminals, some of which are even located in the barracks. The computers are used in a wide variety of courses, but are particularly useful in the hard science areas of the curriculum. Together, these television and computer systems offer today's West Point cadets the latest in educational technology. Earlier this week, I also visited the Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland, where a program of very dynamic growth, including very much construction, is nearing an end. In 129 years. The United States Naval Academy learned long ago that tradition alone is not enough to sustain a great institution. In order to continually attract outstanding young men, the Academy is committed to constant upgrading of its facilities, faculty, and curriculum. The Academy is nearing completion of a new construction program which is the largest in its history, and it includes this new $9.7 million library. The Nimitz Library will eventually hold 850,000 volumes, needed by midshipmen who today are choosing from over 500 courses in 27 major fields. As recently as 1964, all midshipmen took the same 40 courses during their four years here at Annapolis. 
Now being completed adjacent to the Nimitz Library is Rickover Hall, a $27 million engineering studies complex. One phase of the construction program, which was particularly welcomed by midshipmen, was the conversion of Dahlgren Hall into a full-fledged recreational facility. The most notable aspect of the new complex is an ice hockey-sized skating rink, which can be quickly dismantled and converted into a ballroom for receptions and dances. Largest in So the halftime is continuing here at John F. Kennedy Stadium as President Ford now has gone up on the Army side. There you see him greeting the various dignitaries uh, in that box. Incidentally, is Bob Hope, who uh, is enjoying the game today. There's Army Secretary Howard Bo Calloway. All in all, a wonderful occasion. Back in a moment. Well, it's very strange to be hearing the strains of the victors march the victory song of the university of michigan in an army navy game but of course it is in honor of the president of the united states who incidentally wore number 48 at the university of michigan and i took note of the fact that the uh, navy's chet moeller wore number 48 in that first half and played outstandingly on defense as you probably know uh president ford was also a former navy man there's bob hope there on the left clowning around a bit <laughs> And uh, we'll try to get a view of uh, who else is up in the booth. Chris, uh, do you have a word? Yes. Thank you very much, Bill. Bob Hope, who is the Distinguished American Award, the National Football Foundation and the Hall of Fame dinner December 10th. As Jerry Zarno of Kodak gets the gold medal, which President Ford received two years ago. The Army team is back. The Army-Navy game is brought to you by Schick Injector Twin Blade. The twin with Teflon coated edges. By Chevrolet, you're invited to see Chevy's lineup for 1975 at your Chevy dealers now. Chevrolet makes sense for America. And by Goodyear, the makers of Bigfoot, the new polysteel radial tire. It keeps its feet even in the rain. Seventeen to nothing is the halftime score, and Coach Ben Martin of the Air Force Academy, our guest today, analyzing for us, Coach. Well, I think the story is right there in arithmetic. Uh, Navy has uh, rushed the ball uh, a great deal more than Army, and passing has been virtually non-existent. I think that that's the key to the thing that uh, uh, Army is going to have to be able to throw the ball now, uh, and they can do it. If they go to that straight formation, uh, they throw the ball very well, and I think we'll see a little bit of that very early in the second half. All right, with President Ford now on the far sideline, over there near the Corps of Cadets, we look at the midshipmen of Navy, who have taken a 17 to nothing lead as the second half is about to begin. A 45-yard field goal, which uh, broke an Army-Navy game record, which was held by National Football Hall of Fame uh, official for years, and an Army player, Colonel Ed Garbish, was done today by Steve Dykes of the Naval Academy. Yeah, field goal kickers go. I think Ed Garbish is, uh, is uh, the name that's synonymous with kicking field goals over the years, so that's a great tribute to uh, somebody to kick a ball as far as he did in the old days. Just super. All right, and speaking of Steve Dykes, who broke the record with a 45-yarder here today, he'll be kicking the ball from his own 40 with the wind to his back, and Army will be receiving it and hopefully will be able to move it a little better than they did the first half. Still standing, President Ford on the right. Now Marcus Hardy is deep. Hardy, who returned 25 kickoffs this year for a school record of 603 yards, including a 100-yarder for a touchdown against Duke and a 95-yard touchdown against Vanderbilt. He's very dangerous. All right, here's that kick. It's high. It's Hardy. He's got it at the 4, 5, 10, 15. No hole there. So, the Army will try to move it. And up front, they will have these players... Hodges, Leopold, Arenano, Caslo, Begley, Moritz, and Daly. And the ball will be snapped from the 23-yard line, first and 10. It's always interesting to start the second half to see if the strategy is going to change. The Army's still in their bone. We'll go see what they're going to be doing. And they go with their starting quarterback, Scott Gologli, and the fullback from the wishbone. Dan Spangler, number 44, carries on the play. 
in the backfield, uh, portraits of the players. Galogley down at the bottom. You get a good look at him. He's a junior. And we have Dale Dodrill, who had a couple of fine runs, number 37 in the first half. Dan Spangler, who carried the ball in the last play. And Marcus Hardy. So now it's a second down and six from the 27 for Army. They trail. Second play of the second half, and Spangler gets the call again. And he comes a little closer to that forward stake. But it appears to that they'll uh, need the third down in hopes of getting a first down as Bushak again makes the tackle. He's played well for Navy today. I think that Army's just a little bit uh, reticent to put the ball up in the air in their own backyard, but uh, I'm sure if they get out in a, in a wide open territory past that 40 yard line, uh, they're going to be doing something a bit different. Third down and less than a yard. And the quarterback sneak, Galogley, number 14, and he gets the first down. And that should help the cadets. Oh, it sure does. When you get that first possession, you move it, you get some accomplishment gone. I think it really uh, bolsters their spirits. They're really going to be hitting. Now from the 34, with a uh, split in Holly Williams to the far side. First down play, Delobly. What's the throw? Oh, a beautiful catch oh, and a by man. Tony Daly. And a face mask on top of it. A 35-yard strike, and Daly is a Here's tight end. Again. The end releases. It's a throwback, a good play fake, and a beautiful ball thrown right on the money. And the referee, Samuel Winterberg, goes 15 closer to the Navy goal. Gene Ford did the face mask violation. <laughs> Actually, that's about the best chance he had to keep that one from going all the way. He just grabbed whatever he could get a hold of. And so Army really has an opportunity here, Chris. And that's not a lumbering tight end that cut that ball either now. It's a first and ten for Army for 15 of Navy. Their deepest penetration thus far. Hit it with a forward pass. It's Marcus Hardy, number 45. Nice off to the right side. Let's see a replay of the face mask violation. Just reaches out and grabs it. Of course, that's a dangerous thing, and it is a big penalty, but you can really severely injure someone. So it's a 15-yarder from the spot of the foul. After Spangler carried on the last play, let's see what Galogley, the quarterback of Army, will do on a second and eight from the 13. Navy is in the lead, 17 to nothing. All this from JFK Stadium in Philadelphia. And Marcus Hardy, nice across the 10, down to between the eight and nine hash marks. They're back in that unbalanced line attack, and they went to the uh, wishbone power play off tackle to the strong side that time. Pretty effective move as they picked up good guarding. I don't think they're shocked occasionally to see Navy's female cheerleaders. They're from other colleges in the Annapolis area. Tryouts were conducted. They're a little outnumbered here today. On a third down and four. Oh, gain of a yard, so it brings up a fourth down. Paypack. Defensively strong on the play for the Navy defense. Number 77, the defensive left tackle. So the ball between the hash marks, eight and nine. And it brings up a fourth down. And as we look to the far side, it's a three, a good three yards for the first down. And they're not going for any field goal here. They've got to get a six-pointer, I'm sure. Uh, uh, Homer Smith knows that he has to make a, a conversion out of this one. So uh, you're going to see a play coming up here. All right. Fourth down and three. Army fans. Navy fans. Oh, it's really close. The stakes are on the far side, the opposite side of the field, as the referee Winterberg looks to the far side. He calls in the linesman John A. Warner Jr. and the crew. And this is now when the Corps of Cadets not make a lot of noise. But should it be to their advantage, you'll hear plenty. We sure will. You will know without being able to see which way it goes, but it is very close. And Army came back to the weak side of their offensive formation that time uh, for the option play. I think it was a good call. Just not enough uh, field to get in the running room they needed. They had to cut back up in there to try to get the yardage. And Navy gives you the indication that they did not. Army did not make the first down. 
Oh, but that a critical play. They stopped him with about two feet to go. And uh, ironically for Army, it was Gene Ford who had the face mask violation that really made the key tackle. There you're looking at uh, President Ford, Major General Sidney Perry, the United States Military Academy Superintendent, and a man that has done so much as an American, Bob Hope. So, Navy has the ball now, first and ten, at their own six. Amin is flanked to the far side of the field, power eye in the backfield. And Army's defense is fired up. Goodwin was in there with the carry and uh, 51 Dyson and also 94 trailer. Tiki trailer as we look at the offensive line of Navy. Owen, Seward, Collier, Reed, Driscoll, along with uh, Feckler, number 56. There is a look at Mike Roban, the quarterback from Great Falls. This is Robin Amon, number 80. This is Jerry Goodwin, number 43, and 25, Cleveland Cooper. So on a second eight, Navy stopped at the 10. Oh, this is a very important series for the Navy, just as it was for the Army a series before. They've got to get out of their own backyard, and this play in particular is very significant, uh, whether they'll put it up in the air to, to get it out of there. I, I rather think they're, they've got a big choice to make here. All right, because it's third down and six. And the ball is by the 10. We have 10 minutes and 29 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Navy with the ball, leading 17 to nothing. Navy has converted one of six third down tries. Here's another. In motion, Jackson has scored both Navy touchdowns. And again, it is Goodwin. And it appears that he did not make the Navy first down, so it'll bring up a punting situation. And on comes the specialty team, the punting team. Well, they do have a good kicker in John Stufflebeam. I rather I think that they decided they wouldn't take any chances to have a turnover deep in their own backyard. They have the wind at their back, and, and with a kicker like Stufflebeam, I think that was a percentage play. All right, look at him limber up that leg. He's really a high kicker. All right, it's number 21, John Stufflebeam. Pass a little troublesome. Number 26 is Gary Smithy of Army. And the ball rolls dead at the Army 35 and a half. A 50-yard key punt. We'll be back in a moment. John Stufflebeam, and they gave him a roller, and he showed a lot of cool, I'll tell you. He picked it up and hurried a little bit, but got some rhythm into it, and it shows what a perfect high-kicking form he has. Got 50 yards out of that kick. Reminds me of Sam Sneed, the golfer, who can get that leg above his head. And speaking of golf, I'd like to congratulate you on winning the National Football Coaches Golf Tournament in Hot Springs. How'd you do that? <laughs> I beat Frank Brawls by two strokes. He, he, he didn't have his butter with him. <laughs> From the 36 now, Army has the ball. And Hardy, number 45, fine ball carrier, gets a yard or two as Bushack makes the tackle. Army, if you just joined us, had made their deepest penetration to the eight. They failed on fourth down. Here comes a pass offense. That's Lehman Hall and a spread formation team. They're going to go to the air lanes now, Chris. All right, and I'm glad the bomb squad's in there because I am too. we need a little in store for the Army. Lehman Hall is the head of that unit, number 16 of freshmen, 6'5". There he is. 
Rifles it down the middle, and it was low. I'll tell you, the first shot out of the gun, though, Navy did what they should. That kid's a freshman. They put the blitz to him, and he had to release early. They're going to try to get him rattled because when he has the time, uh, he's a good one. He can throw that ball. Chuck Tysig was the intended receiver. Number 46, Hall now has thrown three times, completed one for nine yards. So now here he is with a third down and about nine from his own 37. Woodcock, number 40, to the near side. Hall rifling one and uh-oh. He threw it to somebody, but it's from the other service. Yes, Jeff Scott, number 53 of Atlanta, Georgia, a junior linebacker, pulled it out in there. We now have the third Army turnover. Well, that, he threw that one into a crowd. They went from the blitz uh, lock on defense to a drop back zone that time, and uh, he didn't have time to read it, so he threw it into a crowd. And again, super field position for the Navy. They scored one touchdown, getting a fumble recovery at the Army 13, and on a fourth play, went in. So, Roban hands off, and Navy, decision like with Goodwin, the fullback, carrying the ball to the 42 of Army, so it'll be a second down and three. Dunn Cavage, the linebacker, number 54, on the tackle. You know, I haven't been around a lot of service academy games, Chris. Uh, the last snap was taken by a freshman, a plebe, and a snap before that by another plebe on the other side of the line of scrimmage. That's really pressure. All right, second and three. We're in the third quarter, 8.16 to go. Navy leading 17 to nothing. They're moving the ball. Cleveland Cooper gets to about the 40. And it'll bring up a third down, little more than one. Chuck Baker, along with uh, Tyke Trailer, a freshman from Lachlan, Ohio, and on the play. You know, of all the total first downs of which 21 have been made, 19 of them by rushing, that shows that passing has really been a secondary role here today. So let's see what the midshipmen will do. Third and one. Gilmore. First down for Navy. We try to mention as many hometowns as we can because combined, the two rosters have players from 30 of the 50 states. So it is a representation of the entire country if you added in the entire corps and the entire brigade. It really is. I think uh, the corps and our cadet wing and the brigade of midshipmen, uh, they're uh, from all over the 50 states, and I think it's nice that their football team should be from all over the United States, too. Robin Amin to the near side of the field, first and 10 for Navy at the 35 of Army. They lead 17 to nothing. Navy. Beautiful pass by Roban. And after catching the ball, Kevin Sullivan wanted more. He's a native of uh, Philadelphia, Chestnut Hill Academy product. Now and crossing over pattern where they clear the zone with the split man and then cross the tight end over into that zone. It's a very popular pattern and it was executed extremely well that time by Mike Roban. First and ten now for the Navy from the 21. Army now against Navy in this classic game have failed to score in six quarters. Last year they were shut out 51 to nothing. It is now 17 to nothing. But the game is far from over. 6.43 to go, third quarter. Ed Gilmore from Long Branch, New Jersey, carried the ball, and Mark Smith of Fresno, California, on the tackle. 66 was the co-captain now moving back into the Navy huddle. Cliff Collier from Belt, Texas, a senior. In 15, Mike Roban from Great Falls, Montana. That appeared to be 53, or 57 rather, Steve McCraw of El Paso, Texas, a freshman, watching. So now it's a second down and seven. Make it second and six. From the 17 of Army, Navy with the ball. That's a delay penalty. Took a little too long to get her gone. That was Bob Jackson uh, moving. Following will be the Prudential College School Board with Dave Diles, and uh, then it's going to be ABC's Wide World of Sports, an abbreviated version, but one of the most interesting and beautiful and musical that you will see ever. International figure skating featuring Janet Lynn. 
Gordon McKellen of Lake Plus, a host of Dorothy Hamill, international champion John Curry, right down the line. We were there, it was a beautiful event, 4.15 Eastern Time, and then following will be Southern California going against Notre Dame right here on ABC. Second and 12 as we had a penalty. Into the flat to Jackson, and Jackson. Look at the battle for the ball. He got near the 11. I think the whistle was blown, but that, uh, that was a flood pattern. They, uh, they were unbalanced to start with, and then they motioned Jackson out to the strong side, so they had two receivers for one man in the zone to cover, and Roban did a good job of picking out the open man. We've got uh, a little more than three, a little less than four, on third down now for Navy. All right, Navy, one of seven. Third down conversions. Gilmore. Another close one coming up as Mark Smith, number 93, moved laterally, along with Dave Dunn-Cabbage. It's obvious that she wants Army to win. Looks that way. I'll tell you, Navy's got the speed factor going for them now with Gilmer and Cooper, and, and uh, they're really moving the ball to the outside. All right, fourth and one. Would you go for three or go for first down or six? <laughs> it's easy for me to say what to do now. I think they're going to go for a touchdown. All right. That pretty much is your football philosophy. I know that. Well, I think when they're that Academy. close and with this much of a lead. Uh-oh, they call a timeout. Got it. Navy calls timeout here at JFK Stadium in Philadelphia. The 75th game, 4.47 to go in the third quarter. And Navy is in the lead over Army, 17 to nothing. All right, we're back again at JFK Stadium. It's a fourth down and less than a yard for Navy. Navy that started this drive at the 49 following an interception of an Army pass. And they go for it on fourth down, leading 17 to nothing here in the closing minutes of the third quarter. Gary Goodwin, the fullback, and uh, looks from here. Now, the indication, first down, and, uh, and the ball is right on the 10. Let's go down to Don Tullison. Navy running back Cleveland Cooper has suffered a slight thigh contusion in his left leg. He's loosening up on the sidelines right now, and the Navy trainer tells me he should be able to go back in the game soon. Chris? Okay, thank you, Don. Don Tollison, Bill Fleming down on the field. As we now have a first and ten, the ball's on the stripe. Navy. Jackson. Jackson has scored the two Navy touchdowns. Jeff Bruckner, number 61 on the tackle here on the near side of the field. 38, Bob Jackson from Linden Wall, New Jersey. 6'4", 231 pounds. He's got a lot of size. The lines aren't quite the size of uh, the other NCAA colleges. Army's offensive line, 222-pound average. Navy's 221. Defensively, Navy 216 and Army 207. Army's in their goal line defense. They, uh, they were in 6'5", uh, on that other play, and they're in it again, expecting that front of the Second and three from the three. And Army at the challenge of Bob Jackson. Rick Conniff, number 91, you see him there in the white Army jersey. An interesting thing before the game, Navy came out in white jerseys. Army had on white as they have now. Yeah, that's unusual. Then they had to go back in and change again. Somebody got the signals for us, they did. And I think they're keen on Bob Jackson now because he's the guy that's really hurt him down in close. Uh, they're going to have to change up and give that ball to somebody else, I guess. They've gone 45 yards in nine plays in this drive. It's a third down. Oh, that's a super defensive play. Yes. This time Gilmore carried the ball, and up comes the fourth down. And they lack it by less than a yard. Dyson, we must get credit to him, number 51. Well, that fine defensive play for the cadets. Oh, this is what it's all about. Right on that goal line. Just preserving everything that's important to you. Army's really got to dig in. All right, here's the tenth play of this drive. Fourth down, Navy. And the cadets now should be fired up because they take over on downs, but deep in their own territory. Nice work by the Army defense. 
defensive unit. Dave Duncavage tipped the ball. Is that linebacker that we talked about earlier? So, we have two minutes and 24 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Let's take a break. All right. After stopping Navy on fourth down, at their own one, Army has the ball now, trailing 0-17. to 17 And, oh! Holy mackerel. A little of everything for Navy. A safety. They Navy blitzed him and caught the quarterback in that end zone they were going to run the option play instead of giving it straight ahead that's a pretty dangerous thing to do as they found out and scott delogway has caught in his own end zones Tim Hart was one of the players there, number 84, the co-captain of the midshipmen, in on Gerlogli. And now a free kick. Oh, everything has happened. Oh, it day. certainly is. Uh, they had the gap defense. They, they came to the inside on him, pinched it off, made that penetration, which is a dangerous thing when you're that close to the goal line, and Navy was very effective in it. And, of course, looking on on the far sideline, Ben, is the Army captain, Bob Johnson. You can't do anything about it because, although he is the captain, the non-playing captain, he just can't get in there and help. No, oh, the poor guy has uh, had that shoulder problem in the operation and was out of action the entire year. We played against him for two years, and he's a super player and a great young man, and we certainly wish him the best. All right, number 47, Steve Barnett of Las Cruces for Mexico will do the kicking. Normally in a situation like this, Chris, they punt the ball. Right, I'm surprised to see it teed up. Robert Amin has it for maybe 30, 35, 40, up to about the 45. 18-yard return by Navy's Robert Amin. And at the moment, it's 19 to nothing. And we have two minutes and 16 seconds remaining in the third quarter of play. Part of the brigade. Well, probably uh, the reason for the place kick rather than the punt is the wind now. It's picking up quite a bit, and uh, the punt would not have gained them that much. I figured they'd uh, they get a power kick down low to get the ball downfield as far as they possibly could. Watch Ben Martin of the Air Force Academy with us today, and we're going. In motion, Jackson, the 45, first and 10. He's a big kid, weighs about 205 pounds, and he is a strong runner. Dunn Cabbage in on the tackle. As the defense is done, Cavie's linebacker is, uh, picks up the bootleg, which uh, is a tough thing trying to fool him, but it didn't fool him. There's a good hit right here as Mike Robam puts on the power, and Dunn Cavie really brings him down, though, to save a longer gain. And number 15, Mike Robam, holding his head. We have a new Navy quarterback, Bill, per year of Granada Hills, California, junior number 16. And it's Goodwin who carried for a couple of yards on a second down and eight. Kenneth on the tackle. Of course, per year was their starter for many games, Chris, and uh, he'll do a super job for him there. He knows the offense. He knows his players. And he's been in the Army-Navy game before. Uh, uh, I think that uh, he'll do a fine job for the Navy team. With all of we hate to see Mike Roban go out of there with any kind of an injury. Four year, throwing two touchdown passes this year, including about 54% of his passes. So now he has a third down and two. Play, trying to get the Navy first down on the ground with Goodwin, the fullback. First down for the Navy. Well, that's good one. He is really a quick starter. You can just see the difference between him and those other backs. He's really gone in there. He's had 15 carries and 80 yards. And most of them quick burst through that line. The fullback slant plays. And we have a different center as well, which often happens with a new quarterback. Pete uh, Cugio, Brooklyn, New York, number 52, snapping it to per year. First and 10 from the 41 now for Navy. Throwing in Army territory. Rush was on. Jim Hollingsworth may have tipped that ball to give for your uh, credit to him. Well, that's the first throw for a guy coming into the game. That's a tough deal to throw your first pass coming in unexpectedly, not warmed up. So I don't think he had much on that pass. So it's a second down and ten now here at John F. Kennedy Stadium with 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter. 
band shaken up, and that, uh, the report to us is that he will return in the fourth quarter. Second down. And Cleveland Cooper, number 25. He and Goodman providing a very fine one-two punch for the Naval Academy. Kniff, number 91, the middle guard, on the tackle. And the stop was made at the 34. So it's going to be a third down and about three. All these possession plays are turning that clock around fast, which is what Army doesn't want to happen. But Navy knows it, and they have done a good job of maintaining possession. There's Cooper, 25. Zigging and zagging. Cooper couldn't find the room. Freshman Steve Melich of Orlando, Florida, number 22, made the stop. Third quarter is ended. We'll be back for the fourth in a moment snap of the fourth quarter. Navy with a fourth down and one at the 31 of Army. They lead 19 to nothing. Big play. And Goodwin appears to have made the Navy first down. Let's go to Don Tollefson. Navy's freshman quarterback, Mike Roban, has a slightly bruised left shoulder. The doctors are working on it right now, and they tell me he should be able to go back in the game later. Chris? Thank you, Don. Bill Fleming, Don Tollison, Coach Ben Martin. We're all here at JFK Stadium in Philadelphia, the first of three big events this afternoon on ABC. International figure skating at approximately 4.15 at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Notre Dame, Southern California. First and 10 for Navy at the 30. Jackson in motion. Marker is down. As per year, is sacked by Rick Conniff. Rick Conniff. Oh, he's playing a great game and those guys from West Point. He, he's quick. He moves around, runs around those blocks, and then penetrates very quickly. That's a super play by a down lineman. And the third quarter statistics, uh, I think the significance of that is the total yards, 281, and those turnovers down the bottom. Oh, my goodness. And we have an illegal procedure penalty. And uh, with the ball now at the 38. And it's going to be a second down and 18. Penalty decline, of course, because the loss was eight yards. There you see 16 per year. Cooper. Hoping to clear some traffic. You probably saw him was number 43, the fullback, Gary Goodwin. Cooper going outside, and Mark Smith made the tackle. That was the second and 18 play. And let's see the advances to the 29. Gain of nine. It's third down and nine. So today, Cooper has had 18 carries. He has passed the 106-yard mark. There he goes limping off the field, and he's the first player in Army-Navy history to go over 100 yards in three successive Army-Navy games. It's quite a tribute to his ability. It really is, and he's a great competitor. All right, third and nine for Navy at the Army 29. Per year. Oh, the pressure is on Roban again. They are really fired up. The Army defensive team did a super job. You know, the Cleveland Cooper... Uh, Chris, he reminds me of Anthony Davis from SC. Same running style, about the same size, a very scintillating runner, got the quick wheels. Uh, I think the <laughs> network's interest in real good football playing with uh, people like Cleveland running the ball and Anthony Davis. And with the comments later, I hope as good as you are <laughs> on the SC Notre Dame game. Oh, he likes those good football players just as I do. All right. John Stoppelbeam back to punt on fourth down and 18. Army will get the ball. rolling. Smithy and White was the deep receiver, but the Navy protected. And again, Army forced back to its wall again. We'll try to move it from the seven. We'll return in a moment. All right, Army has the ball. First and ten at their own seven. Galogli is the quarterback, and from the wishbone with a split into the far side. Lofts one over the to big number 83, Tony Daly. The drop four from Baltimore, Maryland. That shows a little courage, I tell you, to throw it right from inside the shadow right there, but that was well executed into a little hole in that zone. Ten yards is what they needed as we see it again. Mm -hmm. 
Well executed play all the way. As he read the zone, that ball was delivered perfect timing. Bob Simons has come into the lineup, number 34, from Brooklyn, New York. For Army with a first and 10 at the 17. Navy leading 19 to nothing. Two in a row completions. This one to John Hodges of Princeton, New Jersey, a senior, number 31. Well, Hodges has been the number one guy, and he's split wide. He's, he's got zone coverage out, though. He gets a little cushion, breaks it off, runs for the first down yardage. He's heading for that chain gang, and he sees it and heads right for it. That's a well-executed play, good timing against the zone. And it brings him out to about the 28 and a half with a first and 10. Tony Williams, 89, is split to the near side of the field. Maybe leading 19 to nothing. We're in the fourth quarter, 12 and a half to go. He wanted to throw uh, another pass, but Tim Hart, number 84, from San Luis Obispo, California, was in there too quickly. There you see him, number 84. He is the co-captain. Yes, when you're when you're throwing play pass fakes like that, uh, and the defense knows you have to pass by, it does give them a little advantage. So they just dig in and rush the pass, despite the play fake. Illinois now three or three in this half. Second and nine. Is it the junior? The old wishbone attack. They're running at the perimeter, but the pitch was taken away very nicely by the perimeter people on the Navy defense. Randy Hutcherson, number 41, on the tackle. You see him there. There's uh, an acquire-like huddle of Navy. We have a third down coming up, and now the passing team comes in. Yeah, here comes the split offense now. It's Lehman Hall and company. Uh, they have a specialty team, and they're going to go to pure pass right now. Bob Woodcock, 40, is set to the near side. As a play. Williams is opposite. Third and seven. And it fails. Navy's reading that spread formation very well, uh, not giving uh, Hall much time and uh, no real escape routes. Uh, so here, here comes another team on the field this time, fourth down situation. Jeff Sapp, uh, Ben Martin from Colorado Springs, number 61, gets the defensive credit there. Yeah, we know Jeff Sapp. He was an outstanding high school player right in Colorado. We missed out on him, but he is a super kid. But he's in one of the three service academies, and it's credit to him. Here's the punt, not too long. Dave Hoopen Gardner, and it goes out of bounds at approximately the 38 of Navy. So with 10 minutes and 46 seconds following a 31-yard punt, we'll take this pause in Philadelphia. 10.46 remaining in the game, the 75th Army-Navy Classic, Navy leading 19 to nothing. They have the ball again as President Ford watches. First and 10 from their own 38. The quarterback is Mike Roban, who was shaken up earlier and he lost the handle, but regains it. Let's go down to Don Tollison. If Army had to dedicate this game to one man, it would have to be their non-playing captain, Bob Johnson. Johnson, who is the first black captain in Army history, has not played in a single game this year. This summer he had a cancer removed from his right arm, and in order to avoid possible permanent damage, he had to give up football. The first doctors thought he would be unable to receive a combat commission, but he told me earlier this week that he'll get that commission and fulfill a lifelong dream. Chris? Thank you, Don. Robin Amin now set away to the far side on second down and eight from the 40. Roban back in the lineup, handing the ball off to Mike Yeager, number 10, of Henderson, Texas, a junior. All right, good defense by Conniff and those guard. Uh, he beats the double team block and gets up off the ground. Uh, he had gone to the strong side and they ran a weak side play, made a nice recovery and uh, made the tackle. That's a super play by a down lineman. Rick Conniff from Winter Park, Florida, senior six region. So now we have a third and five from the 43. Loose ball. Goodwin carried the ball. And it looks like, was it Roban that came over to cover the ball? Yes, it was. It's a lot of good hitting out there. Uh, defense has been uh, the primary, of course. Now Navy just trying to get that clock moving around, so they're staying with a simple ground attack. But the Army defense has been hitting very fiercely throughout the contest. All right, John Stufflebean back to kick for Navy on a fourth down and four. The snap will come from the 44. Here's the kick. Gary Smithy looks at it again. 
And kick coverage for Stufflebeam is superb. Punt only going 34 yards, but now it's at the 22-yard line of Army. A former Southern California star, Frank Gifford, about to talk. Games going on around the country, as well as Army, Navy, USC, Notre Dame, and one of the biggest is all tied up. It's Oklahoma, rated by many as the top team in the country, and Oklahoma State at 10 apiece. Take it away, Chris. Okay, Frank Gifford, we have a first and 10 for the cadets from their own 22. They have yet to score a long pass going out, and oh, what a great effort on Gologly's pass by John Hodges of Princeton, New Jersey, number 31. Let's isolate on that last play. This is a pretty standard uh, wishbone pass play. They got a one wide receiver. He runs down and runs a fly pattern, just speed breaks straight down the field. There's a little play fake. The ball is laid up, and he's supposed to run under it. This one just barely overthrown. Nice effort. All right, it'll be a second down of 10 for Army. Set to the near side of the field, Howie Williams, number 89. Logley throws to tough Tony Daly, number 83, and he's out for the Army first down. That's a pass play against the flow. The, the zone flow goes toward the, the fullback, and uh, Gologly sits, sets up. He's going to flow right, looks right, sets, and throws back a little curl-in pattern to the other side. Very effectively done.